Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have a small phone telescope to review. Well, telescope is what the box says. It's more of a monocular scope which apparently carries 40x optical zoom. It's by a brand called Panda and goes for $15 on Banggood.com. I'll leave a link below the video. 40x zoom for $15 seems too good to be true, but that is what I'm here to find out. Keep watching. If gadget reviews, DIY projects and life hacks are your thing, then consider subscribing to my booth and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the action. So here is the box, nothing really interesting on it except for this warning over here which says do not look at the scent directly otherwise it will hear your eyes. It's pretty clear what they meant but I'm just glad they did not put a C instead of the H. Inside the box we have the scope which comes in a carrying case a cleaning cloth, the instruction manual, a quality seal, and a small tripod. It also comes with this smartphone holder, so you can mount your phone on it. It's not inside the box, but it is part of the package, and they sent it along in one parcel. The scope is pretty rugged looking, and the build quality seems good. Solid one-handed grip, and we have lens protectors on both ends. Not very light though, about 320 grams. There's a small hand strap attached to it which you can screw out to reveal the tripod mount screw fitting. Now when you try to look through it directly, your eyelids and eyelashes keep obstructing the view and it's not very comfortable. And that's why this part comes out a little if you twist it. Much more comfortable this way. This here is the dioptric control which you can use to adjust the lens to your eyes as everyone has slightly different visual capabilities than each other. And on the top we have the main focus knob which you can use to focus on the object in sight. And it is very conveniently placed and I realized that when I was using it without the phone. You can simply place a finger on it and easily turn the knob to adjust the focus. From the front you can see it makes the lens go in and out. And you can also notice the lens have a green anti-reflection coating which should be helpful. Now personally I think using it directly without the phone is great. But until we reach time when we can record and store videos with our eyes. Let's switch to the phone. First, I'm going to try and mount it on the tripod that came in the box. Alright, it stands. Now, let's try it with the phone. So, the smartphone mount is a universal type and can fit any phone. Not very good quality though. I'm not going to tighten it too much because I really fear snapping it. When I try to mount it on the scope, however, it just starts to fall under the phone's weight. I kind of expected that the tripod is really flimsy and has a very narrow base and even the legs are not rigid. So I'm going to switch to a bigger one. Alright guys, so I'm going to start in my yard right now. You can see I've placed the box of the scope right on top of another box right over there on the table. It is about 7 to 8 meters away from me. I have my iPhone 10 mounted on the scope over here on a bigger tripod. It's better if you go with a lighter phone because with heavier phones the stand which is of not that great quality can tend to go to one side. But I'm still going with iPhone 10 because it has built in 2x optical and 10x digital zoom which I hope can make the viewing experience a little better. So as of now in this view right now you can see that you cannot read anything on that black box over there. And the main test I'm going to perform with the scope is to see if the scope can help me read anything on that box. I mean that would be something great all right so right up with the scope you can see it is definitely seems much closer i can make out some animals on the orange box i can see that it is i can just read the part where it says perfect for but i cannot read any of the text below that nor can i read the warning one thing i which is very visible first of all is that it's not a full screen image it's just a uh, it's just a round image in a big black circle uh contrary to what they show in their product page pictures from here, it is not readable, nothing is readable. Now from here, I'll go ahead and apply the 2x optical zoom which is built in an iPhone 10 to see if that helps. Alright, okay, so I can actually make out perfect for hunting, sports, bird watching, auto racing. It is actually pretty readable, not that bad. But still, I mean, you know, I have read that box before so that might be helping me. Something which I am not liking very much is this big blur around the edges. When I was viewing directly with the eyes, it did not come that much into notice. I mean, but with the phone, I can easily make out there is a big blur all around the edge. And there is some discolorization on this edge. There's like a blue tint around again. And then go all the way to 10x to see what that does. Alright. 
that I think is as close as it can get with all the zoom of the phone and the scope combined as you can see now I can read clearly beach travel morning KL 1040 do not look at the sun right here otherwise it will hurt I mean that was supposed to be hurt your eyes so yeah the zoom doesn't seem that bad all the way back out so you can compare the difference take one image here and now this is how it is without the scope now I'm going to step outside and see some really big and far away things with it. So let's go. So right after the previous shoot when I was trying to unmount the scope, the tightening wheel just snapped right in half when I was trying to unscrew it and part of it was left inside. So I just actually heated up a screwdriver and pushed it into the part which was inside to make kind of a notch for the screwdriver and that unscrewed the part out of it. This part was left inside so now i quickly had to improvise my own from a screw which i had lying around and a knob from an old table lamp this screw just fits in perfectly and plus it's metal so it's not gonna go anywhere this is how it looks now all right guys so i am in front of the world's tallest building at the moment it's pretty really noisy and windy that is because i'm right next to the road but this is the closest I could get to it. So this is the standard video mode on my iPhone. This is how it looks. And now I'll see how it looks with the scope. All right, right away there is a huge difference. You can see how close I am. And I'm actually aiming towards the top. I'll go even forward and you can actually look at the tip. Look at that. That is the tip. Now uh, I'm gonna go 2x optical. I'm gonna go all the way up to 10x. All right, so this is the best center shot I could get. I'll try and focus on it. Now I'm gonna take a picture. That is not bad at all. Let's just pan through the whole building and see how that looks. Look at that. Now I can look at the cars below. Let's have a look at another building now. This is the standard view. And this is how it looks with the scope. It's not The top is not even fitting in the complete frame. I will just leave it here and I'll try to go with some more zoom. All right, so now I'm gonna go with 2x. I can even see those little windows and a dish on the top over there, some kind of terrace. Now I'm gonna pump it all the way up to 10x. Pretty neat. All right, so I see some birds over there in that tree and this is how it looks without any zoom. And these are the birds close up just with the scope on. I'm gonna apply 2x optical zoom. Now I'm on. All right, there it is. Yeah. A bit blurry, but. Finally, we had full moon just last week and I did not want to miss the chance. So here it is with the phone's camera. Not very interesting because all I saw was a super bright white speck. Even after 10x zoom and manually adjusting the exposure on the phone screen, this is how it looked. With the scope, initially it appeared a big bright spot as well. But after lowering the exposure, it started to become clear and more defined. I could see the different shades pretty clearly. Add another 2x optical zoom and it becomes bigger. Now this is as clear as it can get with optical zoom of the scope and the phone combined. If you take it a step further, this is how it looks. Quite blurry around the edges but not bad at all. One thing I noticed is that at max zoom from the phone, it becomes pretty difficult to align the image in the center of the frame. Even a slight movement will cause it to leave the frame. The best way I found was to place the image right in the center of the screen without any zoom and then zoom in. If you notice closely, you can see glimpses of the craters on the edges of the moon. 
Finally, I went ahead and took some pictures with and without the scope and you can see them side by side. I did not add any additional zoom from the phone so you can have a true perspective of the scope's capabilities. In this last one, however, I became curious to see if I can read that small text right at the bottom right corner of the billboard. It wasn't achievable just with the scope or even with added 2x optical zoom, but with all the way at 10x, I could finally read it. All right, so all in all, I think it is just okay. It is definitely fun to play with, but in no way is it 40x optical zoom. At max, this is 10x. Just by looking at two images side by side, you can see the one with the scope seems about 10 times bigger. Other than that, the quality of the scope is good, easy to grip. Clarity is mediocre when on the phone, a little better when viewing directly. The phone clamp and the tripod are just there to make the package look full, not much use really. In fact, my improvised hack worked better than the original one on the phone holder. But again, it's only $15. It's good for camping trips or if you want to have some fun but not really that practical. I'll give it a 6 out of 10 from my side. I'll leave a link in the description box below in case you want to check it out. That's it for now guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button below and subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews, life hacks and facts. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter and Instructables. All the links are in the description box below. Click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching.